And some things never change. Some things never change. I'm so glad that you're in church today. Are you glad to be in church today? It's a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, you know, as, uh, as we've kind of gone about our, our service this morning, I was just thinking about how incredibly grateful I am for the team of people that God has put together in this wonderful church and all the people that are up on stage and worshiping and all the people that are in, in the back and handling all the, the, uh, the audio and visual details and uh, Pastor Jim for uh, his heart for prayer leading us in communion and Pastor Trent coming and, and leading our offering. We have a wonderful uh, uh, kids uh, ministry overseer in Bree Be Be uh, Beasley, excuse me, Bree Beasley. Everybody give her a round of applause since I, since I massacred your name. But I'm just so thankful. I'm so thankful for the wonderful team of people. I'm so thankful that we together, we're one body and that we do this together. Isn't that so good? It is so good to be together with you um, here this morning. Well, last week we started just a two-part series called Some Things Never Change. And um, there's a lot of things that do change. Your hairstyle, I got, I got a couple of pictures. Listen, after last week, I didn't bring them, but I, got, I had a couple of pictures sent to me last week of hairstyles and, um, and, uh, and a suit of, of something that you used to wear that, man, was really in at the time, but you wouldn't dare wear it today. And... Um, you know, I'd thought about, let's have everybody send in one of those pictures, but that just wouldn't be right on a Sunday morning. A lot of things change, and seasons change, and styles change, and sometimes our likes change, and our, our tastes change, and, and um, some of us, we love change, and change is very welcome to us, and there are some of us um, still yet that would... Rather, things always stay the same. If you're one of those and you are, you're loving, you're loving this series. You're going, yes, keep, keep it all, keep it all the same. Some things never change. We talked about uh, last week some amazing things that never change. Aren't you so thankful? I'm so thankful that as Pastor Jim led us this morning, the truths that he's sharing from God's word, I'm thankful that those things never change. That is such a good thing. It's such a good thing that you and I know we can rely on the truth and the life of the Bible that this will never change, that our, our community is going to change and our culture is going to change and, and, and what, our, what, what our government believes to be true will change and laws will change and all kinds of things will change. But the truth of God's word will never, ever change. Come on, can you say Amen. We talked about last week that Jesus Christ, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Man, what a comfort that this is to us that we don't have to worry about God shifting in his character or Jesus changing his mind about things. I'm so thankful that we can rest in the promises of God, the truth of God's word, in Jesus, in his life, in his character, in all the things that he's ever done. Everything that we read in scripture, we can take as truth today. Can you say Amen. I'm so thankful that some things never, ever change. And today, what we're going to talk about, today we're going to talk about that God's promises, God's promises never change. Why don't you go ahead and open up your Bible. If you have one with you, there's one right in the pew in front of you, or we're going to have it up on the screen here. Open up your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse uh, 15, excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Yeah, in verse 15. Excuse me, I'm all over the place. It's going to be <laughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 15. I put, a, I put a sticky note in here and I got myself all confused. Okay, here we go. You're probably there, but I'm not there. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 15. Here we go. And it says this. It says, and in this confidence I intended to come to you before that you might have a second benefit to pass by way of you to Macedonia, to come again from Macedonia to you and be helped by you on my way to Judea. Therefore, when I was planning this, did I do it lightly? 
or the things I plan, do I plan according to the flesh, that with me there should be yes, yes, and no, no. But as God is faithful, our word to you was not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me, by Silvanus and and Timothy, was not yes and no, but listen, but in him was yes. Now listen to verse 20. In verse 20 it says, For all the promises of God in him, in Christ Jesus, are yes and in him, amen, to the glory of God from us. Come on, can you say amen this morning? For the promises of God in him are yes and amen. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ has anointed us in God, who has also sealed us and given us the spirit of our hearts as a guarantee. The promises of God are yes and amen. Isn't that so good? Aren't you so glad that the promises of God never change? There's going to be a lot of things that change, but the promises of God never, ever change. And and, and as a matter of fact, I mean, really, in order for something to be a promise, um, it means that it has to happen. Definition of promise is to assure someone that one will definitely do, not possibly, not maybe, not hopefully, but that one will definitely do give or arrange something. I can tell you this right now. Parents, you are going to know what I'm talking about right now. If my kids ever want to seal the deal on something, you know what they say to me? They go, Dad, do you promise? That's like, you know, if they're, if they're asking me if we can do something later that day or later on in the week, and, I mean, the, you know, in the, in, the, in the world that my kids live in, 999 Times out of 10, this is, we're talking about McDonald's, okay? Dad, can we get McDonald's for dinner? Yeah, but we can, we can probably make that happen. Do you promise? Now, this is where I got to make a decision because this is where all the maybes and we'll see and I'm not sure. Like, like if, if I promise, then it's, it's got to happen. And, and so if I promise, I say, yeah, I promise, I promise. We'll, you know, we'll go get McDonald's. Now, if I were to try to shift that later, if later I were to try to say, oh, you know, I don't know, maybe we should go tomorrow, they will look me dead in the eye and they'll say, Dad, you promised. And Abby will look at me and she goes, and Daddy, you keep your promises. Oh, my gosh. So what? There's no other option. We're going to McDonald's, right? Because Dad keeps his promises, right? And the Lord keeps his promises. You know who else never breaks his promises? God. God never breaks his promises. And since everything that God says is true, and since he does everything that he says that he will, his word is full of promises. Everything that God says is a promise. Every every scripture that God breathes, it's a promise to us. God never changes his mind. Can you say Amen this morning. Hey, turn with me quickly, if you will, to 2 Peter chapter 1. I want to listen to what Peter says about God's promises. 2 Peter chapter 1. And I'm in the New King James Version. And it says this, Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have been obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in knowledge of God, of, of Jesus our Lord, and his divine, as his divine power, listen, has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. That's a great promise. That God gives us everything that we need for the life of godliness that he's called us to. That's a good promise to hold on to. If God calls us into something, he'll also equip us for the things that he's calling us to. 
God gives us everything that we need for the life that he's called us to. It says, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Listen, by which we have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. I love this. By which we have been given exceedingly great and precious promises. These are not, yes, we'll go to McDonald's. Yes, you can have a spoon of peanut butter. Yes, you can have another granola bar. We're talking about great and precious promises. This is, these are the promises that your, your chains will be broken. The walls will come down. Redemption will come to your family. Your sins will be forgiven. That's the greatest promise you and I have ever been given. That the blood of Jesus will continue to wash and cleanse and renew us that's a wonderful promise and Peter says here and I, I love that it's coming from Peter I can identify with Peter and the man that Peter was and the life that he lived and he was always quick to speak he was a little bit haughty and quick to act and, and maybe he would he's the, he's the one apostle that would put his foot in his mouth on the most regular basis I won't ask you to raise your hand if you can identify but I can identify with Peter and I love that Peter here, coming from the, the life of an ordinary fisherman, and even that with the, in the place that Jesus found him, he, he actually came off of a night of unsuccessful fishing. But when, when Jesus said, Peter, throw your boat on, or your nets on this side of the boat, then he hauled in such a great catch of fish that they had to take two boats to bring him in, and even those boats began to seek. And this Peter, he's saying, My life with Jesus, he'll give you everything that you need. We have everything that we need. What? Through the great and precious promises that God has given us. And listen, these things never, ever, ever, ever change. Amen. These things never change. Now, I know that you, you're, you're not like me. You don't get spam calls on your cell phone every day, okay? You don't get someone calling you every day trying to sell you on a, on a, on a, a, a new solar system, uh, someone, you know, trying to, to, to do any number of things. Listen, all day long, every day, we're trying to get talked into something new. The news every day is trying to talk us into something new. Uh, the world around us is trying to talk us into something new. But what I want to ingrain in us today, and, and really over these, last week and this week, as we're talking about the character of God and the nature of God and God's word, here's one thing that you can take to the bank. God never changes. His word never changes. Jesus never changes. And his promises never change. And you can hold on to them. You can take them to the bank. You can, you can, uh, you, you can uh, your entire life can revolve around the promises of God. You can stand firmly in them. The Bible says stand firm them. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself uh, fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your neighbor, labor in the Lord will never be in vain. The promises of God never, ever change. Are you ready to walk through some amazing promises this morning? Did everybody get a handout? If you didn't get a handout, I want you to raise your hand. We're going to put one in your hands. You should have gotten a handout and, and a highlighter. I want to say uh, happy Easter to you. That's our early Easter gift to you, that highlighter. Okay, don't put it in the hands of a three-year-old because she will write on the walls. <laughs> Speaking for a friend. We got a, we got a couple people up here, a couple people up here. If we can get a, uh, one, of those, one of those handouts and a highlighter too, please. Just keep your hands up and they're going to come around and they'll get those to you. Here's what I want you to do this morning. And here's what we're going to do. The Bible is full of God's promises to us. And I thought it would be good this morning, just as my kids do to me, I thought it would be good to remind you of some of the promises of God. I thought it would be good to walk through some of these promises. And here's what I want you to do. As we read through these, I want you to take that highlighter and I want you to highlight the promises of God that you need to own for your life. Maybe some of the places where you felt really discouraged or you feel like God's not listening or God doesn't see you or maybe you've given up on this one. Maybe you feel like, maybe you feel like God's promises haven't applied to your life. I want, you to, I want you to, as we read through, I want you to, to highlight a few of these promises of God that you want to you lean into today. 
And we're going to speak those over our life today. There are so many good promises. How many of you guys know that um, I, I, had to take, I had to take some of what I, what I would consider some of the most powerful promises, but, but in order to lay them all out, we would have just had to just open the Bible and go page, <laughs> page by page, right? Because every page is full of God's promises. You got your pen in hand? I want you to highlight as we, we're going to walk through these. And when something sticks out to you, when it ministers to your heart and maybe the season that you're in, maybe, maybe it's something you're walking through with your family, in your personal life, in your marriage, with your kids, with your job, in a relationship. I want you to highlight the promise for God, the promises for God that, that stand out to you. Here's the first promise. This is what we stand on. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Come on, that never changes. Aren't you thankful this morning? In 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Pastor Jim shared some of these truths with us already this morning. Isn't that an amazing promise? I love that it, he'll cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. Not just a little bit, not just, not just one piece. He cleanses us from all unrighteousness. How about this? John 8, uh, John 8, 36. So if the Son sets you free, since God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, and if we confess our sins, that he'll forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So listen, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. If the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. Can I tell you, there is no such thing as kind of free. There's no such thing as kind of free. Even if something is really, really cheap, it's not, that's, it's not free. You, you can't be kind of free. No, that's just really, really cheap. Free is free. And, and the Bible says, so if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. There is freedom to be found in Christ. Come on, can you say amen this morning? Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare, not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Come on, that is such a great promise for us. Another version says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. God's thinking about you. He thinks good thoughts about you. Philippians 4, 19 says, And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. My God will supply all of your needs. Not necessarily all of your wants. Not, at, not maybe your Amazon cart. My God will supply all of your needs. You can trust him in the difficult moments. If you wait on him, God will come through for you every single time. Romans 8, 28 says, and we know for those who love, excuse me, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for the good for those who are called according to his purpose. All things work together, not just some things, not just a few things. All things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Isaiah 41, 10 says, fear not. For I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you in my righteous hands. Someone, you need to hear that this morning. You're not alone. God is walking with you. God will help you. He'll strengthen you. He'll walk with you. He'll uphold you with his righteous hand. You don't have to live in fear. God is with you. Listen, Isaiah 43, 2. When you pass through the waters... I will be with you. Through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. Listen, when you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flames shall not consume you. You ever feel like you're walking through the fire? I was thinking about these three men, Meshach, Shadrach, and, and Abednego, and when King, King Nebuchadnezzar had made a decree that every, anyone who did not bow down to the statue of his image would be thrown into the blazing furnace. And I love that 
these three men of God full of faith. They said, we will not bow down to your statue. And even if you throw us in the fire, our God is able to save us. But even if he doesn't, we will not bow down to you. And so they were ordered to be thrown into the fire. But when they went into the fire, there was only three of them. The next moment, the, they stood back and they looked and they said, wasn't there only three that went in? Now there were four. Why? Because the father was in the fire with them. And these four came out. Not a hair on their arm was burned. They went through the fire, but they were not burned. Come on, can you say amen? If you feel like you're going through the fire, hang on to the Lord. Hang on to the Lord. Call out to the Lord. He will be with you. Isaiah 40 and verse 31 says, But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Not as the world gives, I do not give you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Psalm 84, 11 says, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. Listen, no good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. No good thing. Hey, this is a wonderful promise. James 1, 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let, his, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach or without finding fault, and it will be given to him. Listen, what an amazing promise this is. This is one of those promises just like my kids repeat me, but dad, you promise. When I'm in a spot when I need wisdom, when I'm in a place where I need to make a tough decision, I remind the Lord that his promise, Lord, you said if I need wisdom, you'd give generously to all without finding fault. I'm so thankful that James clarified in his book that God would give to all without finding any fault and that God gives it to us generously. That God will pour out wisdom on us generously. What a great promise that is. All we've got to do is ask. Psalm 34, excuse me, Psalm 37, 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Again, I say Psalm 34, Psalm 37, 4, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. That one was so good, we had to put it in there twice. Okay? That's when you don't recognize an error until you printed 150 of these. It was so good. We gave it to you twice. <laughs> Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Here's an amazing promise from God. And we've talked about this before. What this doesn't mean is it does not mean if, if we seek the Lord and we worship him, he'll give us whatever we want. No, it's much, 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 much better than that. It means that when we incline our heart to God, when we give him all of who we are, that he puts desires in our heart for his glory. That is so much better than God just giving you whatever, or giving me whatever I think I want. Because how many times have you ever thought you wanted something? Later go, man, I'm sure glad God did not answer that prayer. I'm so thankful he did not give me what I wanted. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you desires of your heart. 2 Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promises. Some count slowness, but is patient towards us, not wishing that any would perish, but that all would reach repentance. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. Listen, God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, listen, he will also provide a way of escape. This is a great promise. Come on, did you hear what I said? He will also provide a way of escape. No matter how tempted you ever feel to give in to something, and we're all there, whether it's something really, really difficult or it's a bowl of ice cream, we're all always there. There's always temptation that we face. And here's a great promise that God says he'll always allow a way out. There will always be an escape route. We'll never be tempted to a place where we just have to give in. God will always allow a way out. Isn't that good news this morning? Deuteronomy 31.8 says, It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor, for, nor forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Isaiah 26.3 says, You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Why? Because he trusts you. Come on, that's a great promise. 
you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon you. Romans 8, 38 and 39 says, For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor the things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor debt, nor anything else, listen, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now that is a promise of promises, right? There is nothing in all creation that can separate us from the love of God. I want to just pause there for a moment. I want to pause there for a moment. Because we go through stuff and, and we make decisions and, and we get off course. And, and we, we, sometimes we do these things over and over. And, and the more that these things happen, we can, we can begin to feel like, uh, you know, the, the more that I'm messing up, then, then the less that God is forgiving me every time. Or maybe somehow I'm sliding down uh, the, the scale of how much God loves me. But here, here's what I love about promises of God. Remember 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to purify us from all unrighteousness. Then Romans says he chooses to remember our sins no more. So when we go to God and we confess with a right heart, not saying sorry because we don't want to, because we're, we're afraid of the penalty. That's a worldly sorrow. Godly sorrow is a sorrow that brings repentance that we turn away from. But if we happen to fall back into that sin again and we go back to God and we ask for forgiveness, it's as if we're asking for forgiveness for the first time. So if you're ever being reminded of the sins that you have repented from, I want you to know it's not coming from God. God will not remind you of the things that you've been forgiven of. Come on, isn't that good news today? Amen. So good. 2 Peter 3, 9, listen, the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but he's patient with us, not wishing that any would perish, but that all would reach repentance. Hebrews 10, 23, listen, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he, listen, for he who promised is what? For he who promised is faithful. I feel like that's a good time for us to give God some praise right now. For he who promised is faithful to us. Come on, God is faithful. And his promises never change. God's promises, his promise never change. I was thinking about the nation of Israel when uh, Moses was leading Israel out of Egypt. And when, before they left, God said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lead you to the, what? The promised land. It was God's promise for them. It was God's perfect place for them. And boy, they were ready to go. But then when they set out on the journey and things got tough and it was a difficult trek and there, were, there, were, there was like two million of them. Can you imagine journeying along with two million people and trying to keep everybody's attitude right? This was a difficult trek that they make. And, and because of their, their, their attitudes and turning from God and worshiping false idols, all these things, what was meant to be an 11-day journey turned into 40 years of wandering in the desert. 40 years. But here's what's amazing, is that in that 40 years, the promise never changed. There was never a time in that 40 years when God says, because of your behavior, because of your turnaround, I'm going to change the promise. Now my promise is going to change. Now I'm going to take back my promise. I'm going to take back the promised land. Now there was a whole generation that did not get to walk into it because of the decisions that they made. But God's promise never changed. God's promise never changed. I want to ask you this this morning. When you get into your car and you set the destination on your GPS, and you press go, does, that, does your destination ever change? Do you guys, do everybody use GPS? <laughs> so here's what happens. When you lock in the destination, the destination never changes. And there's this, depending on who you've got, sometimes it's a sweet voice, sometimes it can be rather bothersome. That voice comes up and says, in 30 feet, turn left. Stop here. 
up here, and you're trying to figure it out, and it, and it can be all over the place. But here, here's what happens. As, you're, as, as the GPS is giving you instructions, and you come up to a street, and it says turn left, and you turn right, what doesn't happen is that the GPS does not change your destination. The destination stays the same. Now, because of the decision that you made, you went right when you're supposed to go left. You went left when you're supposed to, you bob when you're supposed to duck, whatever. Because of the decision that you made, now the direction to where you're going changes. But the destination never changes. And if I keep making, and now if I if I if I if I if I keep making my own decisions, and she's telling me, turn left, and I'm like, no, I want to turn right. And what's she say? Rerouting. Rerouting. Now it's going to take you a little bit longer to get there. Now we're going to have to go the long way around. You're still headed to the same place. The destination has not changed. It might take you a little bit longer to get there now. But, but because of the decision that you made, you've gone off course. You've turned right when you should have gone left. The, the destination never changes. But because of the decisions that we make, sometimes the direction that we go does. But there's never been a time when your GPS said, changing your destination. <laughs> Has there ever been a time when you got so lost that your GPS gave up on you and was like, that's it, we're done? <laughs> have, have you ever, has there ever been a time when your GPS GPS just said, you know what, forget it, this is ridiculous. I don't know why, you don't know how to follow direction. I said, go right, and you went left. I said, go left, and you went right. You took the off ramp, you were supposed to go there. If you're driven in L.A., boy, you know how this goes. There's never been a time that your GPS has changed the destination. And what I want to say to you this morning is this, is that if the computer in your car won't give up on you, if the computer in your car is smart enough to figure out the next best route to the fastest way to get back to where you're going, how much more will your Father in heaven never give up on you, who's always rerouting you, who's always pointing you in the direction to get back to where you're supposed to go? Listen, his promises never change. The destination never changed. God's promises never changed. But, and, and so, you're, Pastor James, why are you saying this? Because here's the reality. God's promises, they are yes and amen, aren't they? They're yes and amen. These promises are true. There's nothing that you and I can do to conjure up a promise. But this is what we do have to do. We do have to listen to the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. We, we do have to listen when the Lord says, don't touch that. Don't do that. Don't go there. Don't make it right here. Don't. There's something up ahead. You might want to go around that. Amen. I wonder if we consider the GPS God's promises simplified. God's promises simplified. And instead of always trying to figure out the, the, the best way to get where we're going, what if we just stop and said, Lord, how, can I, how, do, how do I get where you want me to go? God, you tell me where to go and I'll go. You say go right, I'll go right. You say go left, I'll go left. You tell me what to turn from and I'll turn from it. You tell me when to speed up, I'll speed up. You tell me when to slow down, I will slow down. You tell me what to believe and I will believe it. You give me direction for my life and I'll follow it. You show me the steps of faith and I will take them. Holy Spirit, be my GPS. Because each of us, each of us, if you've given your heart to the Lord, you've got the Holy Spirit leading us, leading you and guiding you inside of you, right? right? Good. And the Holy Spirit is always whispering to us, go here. Hey, bless that person. Go pray with this person. Don't act like that. Hey, that wasn't right. 
you need to go back and say you're sorry. What, whatever those, the, whatever those, the long list of directions that the Holy Spirit will give us. And as we're following God's plan for our life, here, here's what I just feel like somebody needs to hear today is that you have felt like you were so off course that the GPS has, has changed your, your destination forever or that you've been given up on. And what I want you to know this morning is that the destination never changes. Maybe the direction that you've taken to get there, it might take it a little bit longer. And you've gone over some bumps and some bruises and it's been a longer trip than what you would have expected. And just like the Israelites, they could have been there in, in 11 days, but it took them 40. But they got to the promise. And I want you to know that, that there is nothing that can separate you from the love of God. And that all we've got to do to get back on track is when the Holy Spirit says it's time to reroute. Okay, tell me where to go. Lord, I want to turn back to you. And it is the fastest route, the fastest route back to being on course is just saying, Lord, Forgive me. I love you. My heart is yours. Now lead me and guide me in every single way. It's the fastest rerouting you've ever been on in your life. God, lead me and guide me. There were uh, 12 spies that went into the promised land and they all saw the exact same thing. And they saw God's promise for them. But when they came back, the report that they had was much different and the way that they saw it determined the way that they experienced it and 10 of them who said we cannot do this we can't go into this land you know it is a self-fulfilling prophecy because of their lack of faith they did not get to go into the promised land but those two men there's only two men out of those 12 whose name you remember there's only two men out, out of those out of those 12 who some have named their kids after, there's only two men, Joshua and Caleb, that they stood up and they said, no, this is God's promise for us. And we can't do it, but we can. We can do this. Come on, with God, we can go into the promised land and we can take this for ourselves. And what I want to I I close with you this morning is that as you have your list of promises here, as you have gone through here, and maybe say, you know, this is the promise that I'm owning. Uh, how, how many of you guys know that, that Joshua and Caleb, they had to step into it. They had to lean into it. They had to believe that God would give them victory before they ever saw it. And there were some dangerous things that they had to walk through. There's battles that they had to fight. And they, 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 they didn't see the victory before they stepped into it. They had to step into it with faith. They had to lean into it. And then allow God to come through for them. And what I want to encourage you today, I want to encourage you to lean into the promises of God. Gary, let me have you come. I want to to encourage you to step into those things. And out of your list here, here's what I want. I want to challenge you this week. Of your promises that you have underlined or you've highlighted and and something that you're believing God for. I I want to encourage you to memorize that scripture. I want to encourage you to memorize it and get it in your heart and repeat it over yourself. And and when the situations that you're facing, when you need it, speak the word of God. Remind God of his promises to you. Come on, just like my kids would do to me. Remember God, you said you'd never leave me. You'd never forsake me. Remember God, you said you'll work all things together for the good of those who love you. Come on, God, remember that you said. Remember that you said. And your promises are yes And amen. Stand with me this morning if you would. His promises are yes and amen. His promises never change. And I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you this morning, but I want to give you an opportunity. Maybe maybe you've been in a place in your life where you're feeling like a little bit off course. And maybe, uh, maybe the Lord's been trying to reroute you for some time. Or maybe you've walked away. Or maybe you've never said yes at all. Today is the best decision that you could ever make. The quickest, the, the, the fastest way to getting on course for your life. The fastest way back to the Father is just to simply say yes to him. I want to give you that opportunity with all of our heads bowed and our eyes closed this morning. I'm so thankful that all we've got to do is turn to him. Church, come on, can you say amen? All we've got to do is turn to the Lord in our time of need. All we have to do is turn to him. And this morning, if you're here, 
and you're saying, you know what, Lord, I, I want to get back on track. God, I want to walk towards you. It's been lonely. It's been difficult. Um, it's been scary. Um, it's been hopeless. I'm struggling. I need you. I'm so thankful all we have to do is come to the cross. There's forgiveness at the cross through the blood of Jesus. And I want to encourage you this morning, if you want to make that decision, maybe you're coming back to the Lord. Maybe you're just, you know, Lord, I want to rededicate my heart and my life to you this morning. Or maybe you're making this decision for the very first time. I want to give you that opportunity this morning. It's the greatest decision that you could ever make. And right now, if that's you, just right where you are, and you want to say yes to Jesus, whether you've done that before or whether you've never done that before, and you want to say yes to Jesus, I just want you to raise your hand wherever you're at right now. Come on, I see your hands. I see your hand wherever you're at right now. You just want to raise your hand and say yes to Jesus. And this yes this morning is, Lord, I receive your promises for me. I turn from the sin in my life. I turn from the difficulties. I turn from the distraction. I, 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 turn from the, uh, I turn from the road that I've been on, and I'm turning towards you and believing your promises for me and for my life. I know you have a wonderful plan for me and that your promises are yes and amen. Come on, with your hands raised this morning, we're saying yes to Jesus. Church, let's pray together. Father, there's no greater place that we could be than in the palm of your hands. And I thank you for every person here this morning that is saying yes to you. I'm thankful for every person who's coming back to you. I'm thankful for every person who's saying yes for the first time. God, I'm thankful for every person just with a repentant heart coming to you saying, Lord, we cannot do this on our own. And we're thankful that this morning we can trust in your promises. We thank you that your promise for us is yes and amen. We thank you that if we confess with our mouth uh, that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God rose you from the, the dead, that we would be saved, that all who call on the name of the Lord would be saved. And so, Lord, we give you our hearts. We ask your forgiveness for our sin. We thank you for putting our feet on a solid rock. We thank you for working all things together for the good of those who love you. God, we thank you that you've never left us and you'll never forsake us. God, we're thankful for the plan that you have for us. And thank you for every one of these promises that we're going to hold on to, Lord, that we're going to speak over our lives, that we're going to own with everything that we are. We say thank you in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone says amen. Hey, come on, give God a big round of praise this morning.